Welcome to this presentation. In my previous presentation, we talked about the Spanish Baroque harp here on my right hand side. And today we will be talking about the Arpa Doppia from Italy, also known as the triple harp here on my left hand side. The Arpa Doppia is in many ways related to the Spanish harp, but to see why this is so, we have to go back to the year 1501. was claimed by France in a quarrel that started from 1494 till 1495 by Charles VIII of France, who expelled Alfonso II of Naples from the throne. Fortunately for Alfonso, Ferdinand of Aragon, later known as Spain, came to his aid and the throne was restored to Alfonso's successor, Frederick IV. In the meantime, Charles VIII was succeeded by Louis XII, who wanted to reclaim Naples for the French. In 1501, Louis occupied the Kingdom of Naples and after a time of partition territories, King Ferdinand of Aragon gained full control over Naples by 1504. Being the nephew of King Alfonso I of Naples, he insisted on being the legitimate heir of the kingdom. In the years to come, Naples became a very rich and important city outside of the Kingdom of Castile, Spain. And it was during this time that the cultural life of the city Naples started to flourish. Spain was the richest country in Europe at that time. mid-1500s, the city started conservatories run by the church. Conserving was the word used because the city and its people looked after the orphans by giving them an education that also included music and singing. In this rich city, opera and commercial music became very popular in the early 17th century. Naples acceded to the music city of that time for training the best musicians. Composers like Vitali, Ferrari, who with Manelli owned the opera San Cassiano in Venice, were followed by composers from the Naples school, like Alessandro Scarlatti and Pergolesi, who was one of the founders of the opera buffa genre. Cross-cultural exchange between Spain and the city of Naples brought new instruments and musicians. It is quite possible that the Spanish Baroque harp was introduced to the musicians of Naples. Bartolomé Jovernardi wrote in his Tratado de la Musica in 1634 on the possibilities of this new triple-strung harp. Being from Spain, he writes that the original double-strung Spanish Baroque harp was still favoured in Spain. Because of Naples' popularity and importance to musicians, instrumentalists and genres very soon found their way to all the cultural hotspots of Europe of that time, and a genre like the Canzone Neapolitana were used by many composers from the Renaissance up to the 19th century. The triple harp I am showing you today is the copy of an instrument probably built around 1619. This instrument is also shown on a very well-known painting today in Versailles, um, painted by the painter Domenico Sampieri. Sampieri was probably also a harp maker, so the painting we see here in front of us is probably an exact copy, you could say, of an instrument that he built maybe earlier. If we look closer to this instrument, we will see that each string goes into the soundboard 
Um, but we can see there's a small quadrant where the stream goes into the soundboard. These quadrants are actually made of bone. And this is a very difficult procedure to put these bone structures into a very, very, very thin soundboard. What we also see on the painting and here on the instrument is that there are openings on the soundboard in the front, four in total. They vary from very big at the bottom and go into a very small one here on the upper part of the body. And we see that they are made in this rep of a sun. We call these very fine work um, and openings uh, intarsian. I'm very fortunate to own this instrument built by Rainer Thurau, a German historical harp builder um, who lives in Wiesbaden. And he really used uh, decades of um, knowledge on building this instrument from the painting. So the obvious question you would like to know is, what is the difference between a triple harp and the modern concert harp? The thickness of the soundboard is much thinner, therefore the strings are much less tighter strung. The Baroque harp is strung with two different types of strings. We first have the gut strings at the bottom. And then when we go into the treble, we have what we call carbon fiber strings. Strings cannot be reached from the back of the instrument like we are used to at the concert harp. So you have these um, openings in the front, these quadrants that I was speaking about previously, and you take a string and make a knot over a piece of thicker string. And then you put it into the hole and then you use these wooden pins to fasten the strings by. At the top we have these tuning pins that has a hole inside where you can put the string around. There are no pedals on this instrument as you can see and therefore this instrument is tuned diatonically. We have the outer row for the so-called white keys of a piano starting with the for instance now red string C and also being able to play this on the other side with the left hand. The inner row, of course, is then the black keys from, of a piano. But if you now look at the, at the inner row, you don't see the typical three twos, three twos, three twos of the piano. And that has to do with the way that we actually tune this instrument. Tuning in the 17th century is a subject in itself. During this epoch, many different ways of tuning were used, each one trying to make what was thought to be beautiful thirds. So today we have equal tuning or, or equal tempered um, instruments on the piano. That's very, very easy to see. Um, but back then, for instance, um, major thirds, the bigger third, was a bit smaller, as you maybe can hear. And the minor third was a bit bigger. This method limited the possibility of using many different keys. Keys using more than three different signatures were seldomly used. There was the possibility on this instrument to accommodate this. For instance, um, the instrument here has now C, and then the middle row has then C sharp. Then D comes and then D sharp. And then I actually have the possibility to tune an E flat. So actually I have, if I have now the black keys of a piano, I would have C sharp, D sharp, and E flat. That's why it's tuned twice. I've tuned it now today in a different tuning just to, to make this obvious. And then we have, of course, F sharp, G sharp, 
ending A sharp and another A sharp, so to speak. We also know today that the harp players of the time sometimes even retune the diatonic row. Um, and I'm just going to read a bit for you. The polymath Marin Mazen, he lived from 1588 until 1648, wrote on tuning in his treatise Harmonie Universelle um, in Paris 1636. When the strings of the inner row are tuned with a B natural, the outer ones are tuned with B flat. So tuning your harp could actually depend on the work that you are playing. This sometimes happens also during the very late Baroque period where you start to actually play more solos and lesser continuo. The literature of the triple harp is very limited. The instrument evolved as previously shown in Naples, and we believe that a direct connection to the opera exists. Therefore, the existence of this instrument is greatly dedicated to continual playing. Unfortunately, today many productions use uh, only the theorbe, um, but actually this instrument, I find, has much other qualities that I think um, were often used um, in opera um, accompaniment. Um, for instance, you can play double chords, like on a two manual um, cembalo. I play the same notes on, the, on, on each of the outer rows. Okay. Um, or you can maybe um, make a chord by using some double chords and maybe not all of them being the same. And then you also have the possibility of very, very long and lush bass lines. Then we also have the tuning part that really helps uh, maybe sometimes in a production. We have the possibility to really um, tune in mean tone tuning, which is what I talked about, the smaller major thirds and the bigger minor thirds. And therefore, um, we could actually play in mean tone temper, um, which Theorbe couldn't. The most well-known use of the triple harp in a work is definitely the solo that was written by Monteverdi in his Le Orfeo um, in the aria Possente Spirito. This instrument existed for almost 200 years, and it is also believed that the continual group of, for instance, Handel's operas at Meto and Sirue were probably, when not definitely, um, accompanied by the triple harp. On solo works for the instrument, there is the Richard Carr by com the composer, organist, and harp player Ascanio Maione. Um, he wrote in 1609 this piece, and it is explicitly written for the triple harp. Two composers that should be mentioned were Frescobaldi and, of course, Trabacci. They both also wrote works either for the keyboard or for the harp. Sometimes it's really difficult to tell which they want. Sometimes explicitly it is said what they want. Um, but uh, today we can only guess and maybe try if it really suits this instrument. During the 17th century, composers often rewrote parts. If they, for instance, uh, knew there was a very good harp player in the city, they sometimes rewrote works and a part would, would exist for a harp. And with this in mind, I think it is also the um, work of a harper today to think maybe and look at literature written for the keyboard, what could be used um, in playing on this wonderful instrument. To give you an example, I will be playing now the following work um, that was written for harpsichord. Thank you for listening and God bless.